Welcome to my 14th tutoring session in A-level chemistry. In this video, I'll explain how to calculate the effective nuclear charge of an electron in an atom using Slater's rule. Before I get on with the topic, I would like to brief my viewers regarding some of the important concepts relating to Slater's rule, like the meaning of core and valence electrons, shielding and effective nuclear charge. I will explain the meaning of core and valence electrons, shielding and effective nuclear charge with respect to calcium atom. The nucleus of calcium atom contains 20 positively charged protons and the electrons are arranged or distributed around the nucleus of the calcium atom in their respective shells or energy levels. The first shell contains two electrons. The second shell contains eight electrons. Third shell contains eight electrons. And the fourth shell contains only two electrons. I have highlighted the valence electrons in blue and the core electrons in red in order to distinguish these two electrons from each other. Now the valence electrons are present in the outermost shell, it's also called as the valence shell. Now these valence electrons are far from the nucleus and easy to remove. Why valence electrons are easy to remove? Because valence electrons experience a very weak attractive force towards the positively charged protons present in the nucleus and therefore less amount of energy is required to remove the valence electrons. Now the core electrons are those electrons which are present in the inner shells and they are closer to the nucleus and very difficult to remove. Why is that uh, core electrons are difficult to remove? Because they experience a very strong attractive force towards the positively charged protons present in the nucleus and as a result a large amount of energy is required to remove the core electrons. Now the core electrons contribute to shielding. What is shielding? Shielding is a phenomenon where the core electrons or the inner shell electrons partially block or reduce the electrostatic force of attraction between the positively charged protons and the electrons that is the valence electrons and since they contribute to shielding core electrons are also called as shielding electrons. Now core electrons most importantly, they reduce the effective nuclear charge. And what is effective nuclear charge? Now, effective nuclear charge is the electrostatic force of attraction between the positively charged protons and the valence electrons. Now, we can also define effective nuclear charge as the net positive charge experienced by the electron in a multi electron atom. Now each shell or the energy level with core electrons adds more shielding between the outer valence electrons and the nuclear protons leading to weaker attraction between them. And remember the effective nuclear charge represents the net positive charge experienced by an electron in an atom. Now there are several methods available to calculate the effective nuclear charge. The choice of method depends on the specific context and the accuracy required for the calculation. Now the Slater's rule is a widely acclaimed and widely employed rule and to determine the Z effective using a Slater's rule 
you can use this uh, formula z effective is equal to z minus s where uh, z effective is the abbreviation for the effective nuclear charge z is the atomic number is the number of protons for the particular element and s is the screening constant or the shielding constant the screening constant depends on the number of inner core electrons and it is a parameter used in uh, slater's tool to estimate the shielding effect of inner core electrons on outer valence electrons in multi electron atoms now i already explained the shielding effect of inner core electrons on uh, outer valence electrons in case of uh, calcium atom now in case of calcium atom the inner core electrons they partially block or reduce the electrostatic force of attraction between the positively charged protons present in the nucleus and the valence electrons and therefore they are also called as shielding electrons so screening constant or shielding constant it is an important parameter used in slater's rule to estimate the shielding effect of the inner core electrons now time for some uh, practice questions relating to the effective nuclear charge i will uh, guide you through in finding the answer for uh, these three questions and determine the z effective using slater's rule so i'll explain the slater's rule in determining the z effective for a 2p electron in fluorine atom 3p electron in chlorine atom and 3d electron in bromine atom So remember the effective nuclear charge experienced by an electron in an atom can be calculated using the formula z effective is equal to z minus s where z is the atomic number of the element and s is the screening or the shielding constant Now z effective as i told you can be calculated using the formula z minus s where z is the periodic i mean the atomic number of the element and you can find the atomic number using the periodic table for the particular element in question and what about s s is the screening or the shielding constant and we can use the slater's rule to find the value of s and uh, thereby finally calculate the z effective value for the electron in question for the particular now i'll uh, walk you through in a step by step manner in determining the z effective of an electron in an atom step 1 identify the element of interest and write on its atomic number step 2 write the electronic configuration step 3 group the electrons in this particular fashion step 4 identify the electron in question to calculate the z effective value step 5 assign the shielding constant values for the s and p d and f electrons now for s and p electrons the shielding constant values are as follows for the electrons in the same shell or energy level the same group it is 0.35 for one shell lower it is 0.85 and for two shell lower or more it is assigned value of 1 now for d and f electrons for the electrons in the same group the shielding constant value is assigned as 0.35 and all other electrons in the lower groups are assigned value of 1 so it is easier to assign the value for uh, d and f electrons now let me help you finding the 
answer for uh, the three questions. Question number one, determine the Z effective for a 2p electron in fluorine atom. So let us follow these uh, steps in a sequential order. Step one, identify the element of interest and write on its atomic number. Yes, we have identified the element, it is fluorine and its atomic number is 9. Step 2, write the electronic configuration. Electronic configuration of fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Step 3, group the electrons in this particular fashion. Yes, we have grouped the electrons as per the guidelines given by the status rule. Step 4, identify the electron in question to calculate its uh, z effective value. So this is the electron of interest for which we are determining the z effective value. So leave out the electron of interest for which we are calculating the z effective value. And now the configuration 2p5 reduces to 2p4 because we have left out the electron of interest for which we are determining the z effective value. Now next step assign the shielding constant values. So electrons in the same group of shell is 0.35 and one shell lower it is 0.85. Now let's do some max. There are a total of six electrons in the second shell and two electrons in the first shell. So six times 0.35 plus two times 0.85. You sum up the resultant values and finally you arrive at the value for Yes. Now calculate the Z effective value for the 2p electron in fluorine atom using the formula Z minus S. Z is the atomic number, S is the screening constant or the shielding constant. So on doing that, you get value of 5.2. So 5.2 is the effective nuclear charge for 2p electron in fluorine atom. Now moving on to the next question, to determine the Z effective for 3p electron in fluorine atom. Again, you will following the same uh, steps. Step 1, identify the element of interest, write on its atomic number. Yes, it is fluorine atom now. Atomic number is 17. Electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. Group the electrons. Yes, we have grouped the electrons as per the guidelines. Identify the electron of interest. Now the electron of interest is the 3p electron in fluorine atom. So this is the electron of interest. So always leave out the electron of interest. Do not assign any S value for the electron of interest because this is the electron for which we are determining the Z effective value. And now 3P5 reduces to 3P4. Now assign the shielding constant values for all the electrons present in different shells. For the electrons present in the same shell, is 0.35, one shell lower it is 0.85 and two shell lower it is 1. So there are uh, six electrons in the third shell, so six times 0.35, eight electrons in second shell, eight times 0.85, two electrons in the first shell, two times One, that is two. So sum up all the values. On summing up all the values, we end up with 10.9. So 10.9 is the S value. And finally, calculate the Z effective using the formula. 
and deduce the values in the formula. The atomic number of chlorine is 17. S value is 10.9. So the Z effective value for the 3p electron in chlorine atom is 6.1. Moving on to the last question. To determine the Z effective for the 3d electron in bromine atom. Atomic number is 35. Electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, 4s2, 4p5. Group the electrons as per the guidelines. Identify the electron in question to calculate its Z effective value. So electron in question is the 3d electron. So leave out the electron of interest and do not assign any value. And in case of bromine atom, you can find that there are some more additional electrons. That is, uh, there are uh, totally eight electrons present in the higher energy level. That is in the quotient. So do not assign any values for the electrons present in higher energy level. So ignore the 4s2 and 4p6 electrons as they are present in the higher energy level. and uh, Moreover, they do not contribute towards shielding. So 4s2, 4p6 electrons do not contribute to shielding as they are present in the higher energy level and therefore you ignore all the electrons present in the higher shell as they don't contribute to the shielding. Now 3d10 gets reduced to 3d9 as we have left out the electron of interest. Assign the shielding constant values. And it's very easy to assign the shielding constant values for uh, D and F electrons. So for uh, D electron, present in the same group, you assign a value of uh, 0.35 and all other electrons in the lower groups, you assign a value of 1. So it's very easy to assign the shielding constant values for uh, D and F electrons. So electrons present in the same group, it is N, I mean uh, 0.35 and all other electrons in lower groups, it is 1. So do some max, sum up all the values, you end up with uh, 21.15, the value of S. So that is the value in the formula. Atomic number of bromine is 35. So when you subtract uh, S value from the atomic number of bromine, that is 35, you end up with 13.85. So 13.85 is the Z effective for the 3D electron in a bromine atom. Now time for some homework questions leading to the effective nuclear charge. Determine Z effective for a 3D electron in iron. Determine Z effective for a 1s electron in osmium. Find Z effective for a 4s electron in copper. Find Z effective for a 3d electron in copper. Now, if you face any difficulty in finding answers for any of these four questions, you can comment me and I'll get back to you. So don't forget to subscribe my channel, share and like my videos. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll meet you in my next interesting tutoring session.